everybody. Um, okay, so I just wanted to come to you today with a quick video um, of my top 10 slash 11 things to never say to an autistic person. Okay, now huge disclaimer on this. These are just my thoughts, feelings, opinions, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but also I said what I said, right? So just big disclaimer, every autistic person is an individual. We all have our own thoughts and feelings and experiences. Um, these are some things that I find offensive and that I feel like other people who are autistic may find offensive also. So without further ado, there's my disclaimer. Let's just get into it. So uh, the first thing to never say to an autistic person is, oh, well, you're very high functioning. Functioning labels are terrible, okay? They are harmful. They ignore the strengths of the high functioning, quote unquote, autistic person. And they ignore the, the or sorry, they ignore the strengths of the quote unquote low functioning autistic person. And they tend to ignore the challenges of the quote unquote high functioning autistic person, okay? So basically what I'm getting at here is that um, there's sort of this false dichotomy, I feel like. People believe that there is high-functioning autistic people and low-functioning autistic people. This is completely untrue. Um, every autistic person is an individual. Every autistic person falls on their own individual place in the spectrum. And whether you are quote-unquote high-functioning or quote-unquote low-functioning, um, there are good things about your autism and there are bad things about your autism like everything, everything has pros and cons, right? So don't use functioning labels, treat us as the individuals we are, okay? Just don't don't categorize us like that. It's, it's not true, it's harmful. And especially to assume that if you're quote unquote high functioning, your autism is quote unquote mild or that you don't have a lot of challenges. Whereas someone who is quote unquote low functioning, you assume would have you know, a lot of challenges and not very many strengths. Again, totally untrue, ridiculous, harmful. Don't use them. Just don't do it. Okay. All right. Number two. Oh, like that guy from insert movie or TV show here. Uh, atypical, the good doctor, um, rain man, Adam, the list goes on. Um, so Basically, no, not like that person. Again, every autistic person is an individual, okay? Don't compare us to TV show or movie characters. It's not fair. It's not a fair comparison. It's rude. It's wrong. It's unacceptable. Just don't do it. It's offensive. It really is, you know? Three, don't you mean person with autism? No. I don't mean person with autism. I mean, I am an autistic girl. Okay, that is how I choose to identify. My autism is a part of me. It is a part of me. I feel it is a gift. I feel it is a good thing. It is a part of me that makes me special. And quite honestly, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, not everyone feels the same way. Some people do feel the same way. There are a lot of autistic people who I have met who feel exactly the same way that I do. They feel that their autism is a part of who they are and it's a good thing and that, yeah, sure, it comes with some challenges, but they they choose to be referred to as with identity first language. Okay, similar to the blind and deaf community, they choose to be re referred to as with identity first language because it is a part of who they are. It affects their every everyday experiences. It affects everything. It, it's just, it's a part of who they are. Some people love it, some people hate it, but at the end of the day, okay? So here's the thing with being autistic. Some people think their autism is a fantastic thing. Like me, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, some people don't love it. But at the end of the day, okay, for me anyway, in my opinion, it is a part of who I am. 
therefore I choose identity first language. I'll put a link to an article below that explains it really well because it can probably explain it a lot better than I can. Okay, but one quote from the article that I really like is, if I get on a plane and the airline loses my luggage, I don't arrive without my odyssey. Okay, it's not detachable from me. So no, I am not a person with autism. That is not how I choose to identify. I choose to identify as an autistic person. Okay. And the second thing is that every autistic person has that same right. Every autistic person has the right to be to be identified the way that they choose to identify. So if they choose to identify as a person with autism, if they choose to identify as an autistic person, if they choose to identify as an Aspie, as an Aspergian, as an Asperger, you know, um, as a person with Aspergers or Aspergers, doesn't matter, okay? However they choose to identify, that is the only respectful way to refer to that that individual person is by the way that they choose to identify myself i choose to identify as an autistic girl okay that's just how i choose to identify okay and that is the only respectful way to refer to me and the same for every other person on the spectrum okay however they choose to, however that individual person chooses to identify that is how you refer to them okay for oh did you know that blank can cure autism okay okay this is a whole other can of worms but to make this short <laughs> because we could sit here and talk this back and forth all day to make this short look not every autistic person wants to cure many of us don't Many of us feel that um, our autism is a gift. It's a good thing. We don't want to be cured. We don't want to be changed. We don't feel broken. We don't feel sick. We don't feel that we need to be cured or changed, nor would we want to be cured or changed. We don't want to cure. We don't need it. Like, just keep it away from us, okay? So don't go just telling us what the other side of that too is that there is no cure for autism there's not even if there was i wouldn't want it and many people who i know wouldn't want it either but again right so just just don't just just don't tell us all all, all this nonsense just don't do it it's just it's rude, it's insulting. It's like someone telling you that they wanna cure you of being introverted, or they wanna cure you of being outgoing, or they wanna cure you of being uh, neurotypical, or they wanna cure you of, you know what I mean? It's, it's insulting. It's insulting to imply that your, that your neurology is some form of illness. It really is. It's insulting. So just please don't don't go on cures. Don't just don't just keep that topic far away. Don't don't just don't. Okay. Because it is very insulting to imply that we need a cure for autism when we don't. And um, pushing one is really, really, really messed up. So Okay, number number five, here we go. What's wrong with you? Why are you rocking, flapping, etc.? First of all, okay, what you're referring to is called stimming. Autistic people stim for a number of reasons. We can stim, let's see, it's coming right now. We can stim for a number of reasons. We can stim because we're happy. We can stim because we're sad. We can stim because we're stressed. We can stim because we're trying to express excitement. We can stim just because we're having fun stimming. We can stim to relax. We can stim 
there's a whole host of reasons why an autistic person will stim. And it's important to remember that and to not draw a whole lot of attention to it because it makes the autistic person feel like you're embarrassed by them. And that's wrong. Stimming is really crucial to an autistic person's well-being. It's a way we express ourselves. It's a way we de-stress. It's a way we keep calm in overwhelming situations. And so therefore, you know, sorry, but it's our well-being versus your embarrassment. So, yeah. So, I'm sorry, but if it's my mental well-being versus your embarrassment, sorry, but I think the the choice should be pretty obvious there. So, in case you didn't get that, the choice is our well-being, not you, not conforming just so that you're not embarrassed. Okay, um, number six. Oh, you hide it well. And this goes back to the embarrassment part. Um, people should not have to hide the fact that they are autistic. There's no reason for this. Um, trying to pass as neurotypical is extremely draining on an autistic person. It's draining. It's draining, draining, draining. It takes away our spoons. It takes away our energy. It just makes us feel like crap. We feel sick. And sometimes if we, if we try to pass for too long, it can cause meltdowns. It can cause shutdowns. It can cause us to just stop, not function. It can cause just, yeah, so much stuff. It can cause, you know, us to feel like crap about ourselves. It can, it can destroy an autistic person's self-esteem. It can destroy our confidence. Passing as neurotypical and pretending to be something that neurologically you are not is so, so, so draining for you. It's, it's just, it's so draining. And it's not fair. It's not fair to put an autistic person through that. Um, they shouldn't have to learn to pass. And if they have, a lot of them are trying to learn to take that mask off and show who they truly are inside because it's very hard to be an autistic person in a world that is not designed for us, okay? It's, it's extremely difficult. And um, I will link below a, uh, a link to a video, an autistic simulation video that I think was really, really, really well done. Um, personally, uh, it's very, very close to my experience, uh, with being autistic. So anyway, but I know it's intended to be a compliment, but it's really not. It's really quite insulting to, you know, it's like saying, oh, well, that's good. You know, I'm glad that you, you know, whatever it, it it's just, it's not okay to, say, oh, well, you hide it well, because it's like, oh, oh, good job on hiding who you are. Like, as if we're supposed to hide who we are. Like, no, just no, on so many levels, no, just don't do it. Number seven, this is a big one for me. Look at me when you talk to me. First of all, I find eye contact extremely overwhelming. I find it overwhelming and very upsetting and scary. And therefore, I do not make eye contact with most people. I won't do it. I refuse to do it. It's very, very, very hard for me. Do not force me to do it if I am not comfortable. It's that simple. Just don't force me to do things I'm not comfortable with. You know? If everyone allowed each other the same courtesy, I really think the world would be a much happier place. Number eight, that's inappropriate of you. Okay, first off, who defines what's appropriate? Okay, who? People, right? Us, you, everyone, okay, collectively together, okay? 
as an autistic person, we may do or say things that are inappropriate, but that is not our intention. Our intention is not to be inappropriate. Our intention is just to function, just to get through. Like, for example, okay, when I go to a funeral, I will often show up in sweatpants and a t-shirt, black sweatpants and a black t-shirt. Now, some people would say, you wear sweatpants and a t-shirt to a funeral? Like, what the hell's wrong with you? Right? Well, or I will wear black jeans, either black jeans or black sweatpants. Well, the fact that any other clothing on my legs feels like sandpaper and I sensory wise cannot deal with it. It hurts. It irritates my skin. It's like wearing an outfit made of coarse sandpaper. Okay. I cannot compromise on it. I'm not going to walk around in an outfit made of sandpaper just simply because I want to go to a funeral home and, you know, be a part of this funeral. Or not that I want to, but that other people are expecting me to, which is a lot of reason why I don't go to funerals. Also because I don't get them. I, I don't understand them. I really don't. I don't get it. But that's me <laughs> again right that's me um that's another discussion but the point that i'm trying to make is do not tell an autistic person that they are being inappropriate instead if an autistic person maybe they're stimming a lot more than normal okay Maybe you're in a, a public place and they're stimming and they're stimming and they're stimming and they're stimming and you can tell they're not happy. You can see it in their face that something is wrong. Maybe you go up to them and you ask them, okay, how can I help? You know, what can I do to make you feel more comfortable? Okay. If your question is not, how can I help? If you're going to tell some you're going to tell someone who is autistic, who is just trying to function and get through the day, and who is maybe low on spoons uh, on, and on energies, that, and they're just trying to get through moment by moment, and you want to place the whole thing about being inappropriate on them on top of everything else that they're already going through, just don't. Just don't, because there's a lot of things that you filter out on the course of a day, you know? You filter out a lot of information that your brain just says, oh, well, that's not important, and it just doesn't bother with it. We don't have that filter, okay? We take in and we process everything. I like to think of it like an iceberg. You guys get the tip, we get the whole thing, okay? We process every sight, every sound, every smell, every thought, every feeling, every touch, every taste, every, 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 everything we process, we process, which over the course of a day is exhausting enough in itself. It's like you guys process times a thousand, okay? We take in everything a thousand times stronger than what you guys take in okay so just don't do it just don't get upset with an autistic person for being inappropriate because the truth is it's not that simple to blank you have to connect with other people you have to do whatever you have to you know go out and get a job you have to not be so lazy you have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do the other thing. Just don't. Okay? Just don't. Don't tell an autistic person what they have to do. Okay? Chances are, okay, we know what we have to do. And we know in our own mind, you know, what our goals are and what our dreams are and what our thoughts and feelings are. 
but we it has to be done on our terms okay it has to be done on our terms when we are comfortable okay almost done number 10 man this video is a lot longer than i thought it was going to be number 10 you got to put yourself outside of your comfort zone this kind of goes back to number nine again don't tell us to push ourselves we'll push ourselves when we're ready to push ourselves you know we'll push ourselves we we do push ourselves but it has to be on our terms at least for me it has to be on my terms not yours not anyone else's i will do things and i don't mind doing things but it has to be on my terms for example i might use the self-serve checkout for you know a couple of months before i will ever go and stand in a normal checkout line because the normal checkout lines and being in such close proximity to people makes my anxiety go way up and it also is very hard on my ears hearing their constant chatter and then having to interact with someone a, a cashier on top of that is like <laughs> sometimes it can just be really much. so it depends on the day it depends on my spoons it depends on my energy level it depends on how i'm feeling Am I having a good sensory day, a bad sensory day? You know, it just really depends. Don't tell an autistic person that they have to push their, themselves outside of their comfort zone. It's just not right. It's insulting. You know, we know that. You know, we're autistic. We're not morons. Don't insult our intelligence. And allow us to push ourselves on our own terms. Not on, not on yours, on our own timetable, not yours. Okay, number 11. This is the worst one. Is that the same as retarded? Okay, first off, whoa, okay? First off, the word retarded the R word should never be used ever to describe anything. It's not used as a medical definition anymore. It's not used. It, it shouldn't be used ever to describe anything. It's, it's, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible word. If you read up on the history and how it has been used to isolate uh, people with disabilities and to and to um like just it's derogatory towards them to put them down and to just it's a horrible 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 word do not use it ever ever just yeah really just that don't don't use it ever ever secondly autism is not the same as what is now known as intellectual disability some people who are autistic have an intellectual disability some people who are autistic don't some people who are autistic are developmentally delayed some people who are autistic you know have you know learning disabilities or delays in other areas some people who are autistic, the list goes on. So just don't say that. Just don't do it. Okay, that was my list of top 11 things to never say to an autistic person. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that you know every time I upload a new video. Um, give it a big thumbs up. I appreciate it. Uh, and comment, 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 comment. I love comments. Okay, just please make sure that they are kind and and constructive. Okay, kind being the big word. Okay, be nice, be kind, be be courteous. Be good to me and be good to each other. Alrighty. I will see you all next time. All right. Bye.